Well, a new story has broken out from News Corp and all of Mur Murdoch's tabloids for the past few days. Apparently, every Australian is paying $83 to prop up welfare for those most in need. And per week. And they're being demonized by the, by the coalition, by the tabloids, <coughs> by all conservative right wing media. And all I have to say is, what is wrong with you? I'm seriously asking what is wrong with helping those in need. Because that's one of the foundations of a civil and developed society. Helping those in need so that they can be no longer be in need. Equality and economic opportunities are supposed to be something that we're all supposed to abide and support. Now, I'm not saying this as a socialist. I'm not a socialist. I'm a social democrat. I'm a democratic socialist or whatever. Or, or a pure... I'm not a Marxist or anything like that. I'm just saying that because when you, give, when you pour money to the lowest quarter or the lowest one-fifth of the Australian population or your country's population, your GDP per capita increases dramatically, or your rate of growth increases dramatically because they spend. And the tabloids have been demonizing and have been condemning these people once again, and pensioners this time, surprisingly. And you'll see from my previous videos why the government would not have actually targeted pensioners. This is just a downward spiral in Australian society, and I think we need to put a stand against this. We're going to be expecting a lot of tax hikes in the future, and this and related to the prop, well, related to the social welfare in the article. Now, a lot of the, a third of the companies of the major companies in Australia don't pay any tax at all, and yet the general population, the general bottom eighty percent, are expected to increase their tax hike. This is blatantly unfair, in my opinion, and something has to be done about it. Instead of, um, if you do the calculations for how much tax is being ignored, it comes up to around four hundred seventy billion per year. And if can you imagine what you can do with four hundred seventy billion? I mean, the government is pretty horrendous at, at the moment. Like I just failed my driving test because of one single mistake, and and it's blatantly unfair and money grubbing. But four hundred seventy billion would actually provide at least some sort of compassion or would at least allow room for a more caring society. A great society, in my opinion, is one where the poorest have the opportunity to advance and the riches are no longer exempt from the laws that are made on the basis of it. Or at least that's what I believe should be the foundation of some society. Where tolerance is based not on the tolerance for sake, but because you like or you accept all those who contribute to it. Why, um, this is just, it's just frustrating and this is a problem. One, I'm not saying why it's important because, like I said, we should not be paying more taxes. While Australia doesn't have the highest or even the medium, median tax rate of all OECD countries, it does pay a fair share of taxes and Australian population should be rewarded for that. We've been having funding cuts day in, day out, and and you think that with all these funding ta cuts, taxes should be decreased, but they're not. They're actually been increased slowly in over the past few years because of the great amount of age care for pensioners. So what can you do? Well, you can protest, of course, and I think that will be meaningless because of how many safeties there are. You can run for government and actually force... Um, a lot of the policies that the government claims to abide by to actually be placed into position. And or you can change, force change in legislation. The problem is so far is that all these systems are supported by and self serving and they cause of negative feedback through our political circle. We don't have random people running for government. You have based on union backers who are horrendously corrupt. You have police captains that are horrendously corrupt. I'm looking at you, you Bill Shorten. You have 
lawyers, you have businessmen, you don't have plumbers, you don't have teachers, you don't actually have normal people like students, you don't have farmers, you just have, I'm sad to say, the wealthy elite. So I think running for government or creating newer parties is the way to go. And Australia does this, or Australian populace does this to a certain extent, but we can do more.